to Michael Preachant from the Hudson Institute. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Uh, look, let's go back to the start of the day. Donald Trump said that, yes, okay, I'm pulling U.S. troops out of that part of Syria because Turkey is planning an operation there. And now, in the past few minutes, he said that he, uh, if Turkey does anything that he, Trump, considers off-limits, he will, quote, totally destroy and obliterate the economy of Turkey. Is he confused? That's, that's a setup. You can't ask questions like that. Um, so we're looking at uh, northern Syria. It's a mistake to do what the president's doing. Uh, this is a win for Assad, a win for Russia, a win for ISIS. I'm concerned about security degradation in northern Syria. And the United States, France, and Germany do not view the YPG as a terrorist group. We do look at it as a, as a different part of the PKK. I understand the nuances, but for the American people, uh, for the French and for the Germans, they don't see the YPG as a terrorist group. So when Erdogan says he's going to move into northern Syria and take out terrorists, we want that to mean Jabhat al-Nusra. We want that to mean Daesh. We don't want it to be an ally that we use to defeat Daesh. It, it probably wasn't the right ally to use. We should have used Sunni Arabs. Uh, we should have always used Sunni Arabs in Iraq and Syria to defeat ISIS. Instead, in Iraq, we use Shia militias, and in northern Syria, we use the YPG, the SDF. Uh, that's not a good hold force. So with Erdogan, our Turkish forces moving into northern Syria, I, I, I do think that Sunni Arabs need to be resettled into northern Syria, but I don't think we need to do demographic shifts that change Kurdish areas into Sunni Arab areas, because those Kurdish refugees are going to flow into Iraq. And if we look at the protests in Iraq now, Iraq is so fragile, can it actually handle an, another influx of refugees from Syria? That's the question. I absolutely understand the bigger picture that you are drawing for us here, Michael. When it comes to Turkey's border security, the fact that it considers the YPG quite simply the Syrian arm of the PKK, an internationally recognized terror group. How important is this semantic issue that you're highlighting here about the YPG being what it is compared to the PKK in those countries, which some people would say is a matter of convenience. They don't regard the YPG as a terror group. You'll full remember, it wasn't that long ago, a couple of years, a senior American official went to meet Kurdish fighters and he said to them, that picture of Abdullah Ocalan, the leader of the PKK, you need to take that down. And then he admitted, to come off the wall. Exactly. exactly, when the SDF then introduced the word democratic into their title, Syrian Democratic Forces, he chuckled and said, wow, what a genius move. That will make you more credible. The YPG, as far as Turkey is concerned, it has American weapons, it's a terror group, and it could threaten Turkish citizens in Turkey. And back to your question of whether or not U.S. foreign policy is confusing. It, it is, because the president... In one, in one night says that the U.S. is leaving northern Syria to allow Turkey to move in to, take, uh, to conduct military operations against what it sees as a terrorist organization. And now the president is saying, if in fact you attack the YPG, uh, we are going to sanction your economy, we're going to hurt your economy. Who did the president think er Erdogan was talking about? It wasn't Jabhat al-Nusra, it wasn't Daesh, it was the YPG. And that's, that's just an issue. This is a win for the president in the United States for his base. But the risk is, the gamble is, security degradation that leads to ISIS retaking territory. Will ISIS be able to retake Deir ez-Zor and Raqqa? Will ISIS be able to reestablish in areas where the YPG leave in order to deal with a threat from Turkish forces? Whether they move west of the Euphrates or start to coalesce just east of the Euphrates to stop this military operation. Not that it can stop it, but again, security degradation is not what you want ahead of a 2020 election, something the president actually condemned Obama for when he said Obama left Iraq too soon, and because of that, it led to the rise of ISIS. So that's what we're looking at 12 months before an election, security degradation in Iraq, security degradation in Syria. And it benefits our geopolitical foes. And I'm not putting Turkey in that group. I'm just saying it benefits Turkey to be able to do what they're doing in northern Syria, but it benefits Assad, Iran, Russia, ISIS, and, and, uh, and Iran. If I said Iran twice, it's because Iran is a, is a, bigger, a bigger threat to uh, stability in Iraq and Syria. Michael, you appear absolutely convinced that ISIS or Daesh, if you want to call it that, 
has the ability to regroup and reform and pose a security threat. What do you make of the, uh, of the president's analysis that anybody who captures Daesh fighters is now responsible for keeping those fighters behind bars, in prison, and not <clears throat> able to reform? Because the YPG, am I correct in saying, has threatened in the past, it said, if we're attacked, we're going to release all the Daesh prisoners that we hold. I think everybody has used that argument. We've seen Lebanese Hezbollah take Daesh fighters to the border of Iraq and release them. We've seen Shia militias do the same thing. Everybody uses the threat of instability to leverage their position. We've seen that from allies and geopolitical foes and enemies alike. So none of that would surprise me. Michael, thank you so much indeed for your time. We appreciate the analysis. Michael Preachant speaking to us from Washington.